we have a fresh batch of stimulus checks of anywhere up to $2,600 that could potentially be going out very soon in one state. We'll be going over the updates on that. This is very this is very fresh news. In addition to that, we're also going to be discussing a potential reform in Social Security. Right now, we've been hearing news that the Social Security Trust Fund could go insolvent by as soon as, let's say, 2033 to 2035, where at that point, they would still continue paying out benefits, but they would only be able to pay out right around 77% of the benefits, so whatever you're receiving now, you would be receiving around a 20 to 23% cut in your benefits. So let's hope that doesn't happen. They're coming out with plans right now in Congress, mostly in the Senate. We'll see what happens, but we're gonna be going over one pretty new interesting plan. This is a rumor. It hasn't passed. It's not going to be voted on, but it is pretty interesting in my opinion, so I wanted to bring it to light. Now, before I go ahead and jump into the news for today's video, if you wouldn't mind helping me out real quickly by just giving this video a like, that just signals to YouTube that this video could potentially be helpful to other people like you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and jump right into it right here. So this is from Fox News. Minnesota, Minnesota Governor Walls proposes tax credit for 2.5 million families. So it says right here on the subtitle that Minnesota families would be eligible for checks up, up to $2,600. So I'm going to go ahead and dive right into the details of this. Who would be eligible and how much you would receive under certain circumstances? Okay, so millions of, mil millions of Minnesota families would get checks totaling as much as $2,600 from the state's huge surplus under the budget plan that Governor Tim Wallace announced Tuesday, saying it would give residents the largest package of tax cuts in state history. The direct payments are the centerpiece of an overall $65 billion two-year budget plan he unveiled Tuesday after rolling out other proposals over the past week for increased spending on education, families, health, public safety, and housing. Okay, so it says the checks would be structured as tax credits equal to $2,000 for families with incomes below $150,000 and $1,000 for single filers making less than $75,000. So we've been seeing, this is kind of similar numbers as we saw with those federal stimulus checks that were rolled out over the past few years, where it's going to be $75,000 for single filers and $150,000 for those of you who are filing jointly. So this is kind of, you know, it's kind of very similar, like I mentioned. So if you receive those stimulus checks, then more than likely, if you live in the state of Minnesota, you would be eligible for this as well, as long as it passes. Remember, this is just a plan. It has not passed, and this is just for the state of Minnesota. There could be other states in the future that have other plans like this, and I will definitely keep you updated on those as they roll out and as they, as they begin being announced says they would be get, they would be exempt from federal taxes so taxpayers could also get an additional $200 for each dependent up to 3 so in this case if you have 3 dependents if you have like 3 children for example uh, if you're a married couple for those people they would be receiving the max amount of $2600 if you're single and you have 3 dependents let's say like 3 children Again, in that case, you would be receiving another $600, so it would be $1,600 in those cases. But those making more than the income caps would get nothing, Revenue Commissioner Paul McCourt acknowledged. So in the cases that if you're a single father and you make more than $75,000, apparently you would get nothing. I don't know if they would have any phase-out period where let's say that you're a single father and you make $76,000, you're $1,000 over the uh, income cap of $75,000. If they would just not send you anything, that would be uh, pretty bad. If you just missed out by you know a thousand dollars, you didn't receive anything. Um, or if, like they say here, where if you do receive more than the income cap, if you'll just receive nothing at all. So I don't know if they're going to have a phase out period or not, but it, it seems here that they may not. We'll just have to wait and see though. It says more than 2.5 million people in Minnesota would get the checks if lawmakers approved the plan, the administration said. And Wallace's proposed budget also includes expanded tax credits for families with children for child care expenses. Altogether, a middle class family of four could get $10,000 back, he said. So in this budget plan, there's you know lots of money going out to families, lots of money going out to people. We'll have to see whether or not it passes. Again, this is just for Minnesota. At the federal level, we'll have to wait and see. There have been some proposed legislation of a child tax credit. These would be payments, once again, of $250 to $300 per child being rolled out every single month, kind of like on a monthly basis, like we saw a couple of years ago. We'll have to wait and see whether or not that passes. Um, it is a bipartisan deal right now, but 
Uh, Republicans believe there should be a work requirement where you have to make a certain amount of money, whereas Democrats believe that there should not be a work requirement that you should not have to earn any income and you should be able to receive that child tax credit. So I'll definitely keep you guys up to date on that. Now, in regards to Social Security, there has been a new plan announced. This is between two senators. There's an independent in New Hampshire and then a Republican in Louisiana. So this is straight from the Hill. It says, Senators, I Social Security reforms as some in House GOP consider a cut. So some senators eyeing, are eyeing a divided Congress as an opportunity to tackle reform to Social Security as the program faces significantly solvent, significant solvency issues in little more than a decade. Changes to Social Security are a perpetually heavy lift for Congress, but they, gain, but they gain traction as some House Republicans float cuts to it as part of a debt ceiling negotiation. So um, in these debt ceiling negotiations, a lot of Republicans are saying that we need cuts. We need to have Democrats agree that we're going to be cutting some programs. And some people are saying some of those programs might be Social Security and Medicare. Republicans are saying, no, 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 we're not going to cut Social Security or Medicare just because they know that these programs are so popular, not just among Democrats, but also among Republicans as well. So, you know, we kind of have that back and forth there. Now, Senate Republicans are generally leaving debt ceiling negotiations to, negotiations to the GOP-controlled House, but separately, there has been growing chatter from both parties in the upper chamber about potential ways to help protect Social Security, which some estimates say is on track to become insolvent in about 12 years. So like I mentioned earlier in today's video, in, you know, let's say 11 to 13 years, the Social Security Trust Fund could become insolvent. That does not mean that the program is going to completely die out where they're not going to send out any more benefits. But at that point, they may only be able to send out around 77% of the benefits, which means for you that you could receive a benefit cut of right around 23%, where they will continue sending out benefits every single month to you, but you're going to receive a cut of 23%. So it's definitely going to be hurtful, especially in an environment where we're seeing so much inflation. It says reports serviced last week that Senators Bill Cassidy and Angus King are working towards a bipartisan compromise to help protect the program unrelated to debt ceiling negotiations. Semaphore, which broke the news, reported the efforts could lead to an investment fund specifically to help shore up Social Security. The Senator's office confirmed to the Hill last week that both Cassidy and King have been working on a legislative solution, but said the plan is not finalized. Now, in regards to the plan, what is in this plan, it says that Cassidy and King are proposing that the federal government create a new fund separate from the Social Security Trust Fund. So this would be separate from what we currently have. So I guess no, but not necessarily like a huge risk to what we currently have in which borrowed money would be invested in stocks, which typically grant a much higher rate of return than treasury bonds. In other words, they would harness a small amount of American capital income, which are like returns from stocks, debt, real estate, and so on, which reliably constitute about 30% of national income on behalf of the public. So this is not a this is not just a fair source of funding. The richest top 1% of Americans own over th a third of American wealth. It's also just plain common sense. As policy analyst Matt Brewing points out in the People's Policy Project paper advocating a broader social, security, social wealth fund, between 1990 and 2017, the average interest rate for a one-year treasury bond purchase on the first day of the year was 3.17%. During the same time, the average total return of the S&P 500 was 11.3%. Given how often politicians and commentators advocate for running the government like a business, it is remarkable, it is remarkable how few have noticed this free 8.13% return sitting on the table. Any Wall Street trader would kill for that kind of opportunity, and if we had done so, Social Security would be in far better shape financially than it currently is. Now, of course, we have some conservatives who they say would likely object to this plan, saying that the government would surely bungle its investment, but there are working examples of the social, social wealth fund all over the world, including in America. Norway has accumulated an eye-popping $1.3 trillion in its main social wealth fund, while the Alaska Permanent Fund has accumulated $75 billion. So they're saying here that conservatives are saying, you know, the government's terrible at everything that it does. If it took this money and tried investing it, they would probably see huge losses where it wouldn't work and we'd actually be losing more money. Whereas some other people are saying, hey, this is a great idea. You know, we could be making an extra 8% every single year off of this money if we invested it, let's say like in the, just, you know, a regular fund like the S&P 500, tracking the S&P 500, which historically is going up by around 10% every single year. So we'll have to wait and see whether or not this passes. We're gonna, remember, 
this is just an idea. Um, there is kind of like a Democrat. Well, Angus King is actually an independent, but he caucuses with the Democrats. So, you know, in a way, it's kind of bipartisan where we have a Democrat in Angus King. Like I said, he's really an independent, but he does caucus with the Democrats. And then we have a Republican in Bill Cassidy. Now, it does say that a source told him before that the new sovereign wealth fund would be a separate entity from the current Social Security Trust Fund. And the idea of investing government cash into stocks to shore up Social Security last gained widespread attention during the latter half of the Clinton administration. President Bill Clinton pitched it in 1999 as part of a strategy to extend the program's lifespan as more baby boomers retired. So again, we sort of have a mixed emotions here. We have some people who would be very much in favor of this, saying that, we, hey, we could earn like an extra 10% return on our investment here. Whereas we have some people who are very critical of the federal government saying that they're probably going to invest these uh, this money into some bad sucks. <laughs> now, personally, I guess if they had, uh, you know, Nancy Pelosi's insider trading secrets and had Paul Pelosi investing this money, they could probably make a really good return on this extra money. And they could probably even afford to give uh, people on Social Security a pretty good raise while they're at it. Uh, you know, Bernie Sanders pitched an idea earlier of raising benefits for Social Security recipients of $200 uh, every single month. I guess if they had uh, Nancy Pelosi's insider trading and they invested this money in stocks, perhaps they could increase that even higher up to $500. So curious what you guys think of this idea. Do you want the federal government investing money in stocks in hopes to make these Social Security uh, payouts last longer for a longer period of time and perhaps even raise the amount that they're able to pay out? So let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. And on that note, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. If you enjoyed the content today's video and you would like to see more like it, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe to my channel if you have not already, and I will see you in the next video.